So, uh, Gary, we're going to talk about toxic. We've kind of mellowed the place out a little bit, and this is not an easy topic. So, I mean, what, what inspired you to even want to start writing about this? I was as naive and guilty as they come. I spent so much of my life just focusing on playing spiritual offense, wanting to speak the truth, be surrendered to the Holy Spirit, know the scriptures, gain experience, always respond in love. I never thought about playing spiritual defense, mm. that there are those toxic individuals that are out there, that they're going to be a waste of time, and they also deplete you from reaching out to others. And it was a friend of mine who saw me banging my head up against a wall against a toxic person who pointed out to me in the book of Luke how many times Jesus walked away from someone or let them walk away from him without him chasing after him. I always would have considered that a failure in relationships. I don't believe Jesus could ever fail. So I realized I need to do some research and figure out what's going on here, why I'm letting this guilt mislead me and why I'm being less effective banging my heads up against toxic situations. Okay, we're going to yeah dive in. So let's just have a seat here. Yep. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is such a huge, huge topic. And, you know, so people that are struggling with having toxic people in their lives. So, uh, Cheryl, let's uh, get going here. Yeah, you know what I loved about your book? I mean, if, if you could take a look at my book, it is completely highlighted, underlined, just e like oh, everywhere through here. I, I just, love seeing that. I, yeah, it was amazing. But you talk about the difference between a difficult and a toxic yes. person. And I think that's really important because it's going to, you know, you could just look at this title and then every person who gives you a hard right. time, you're like, they're toxic. Yeah. Right. Every toxic person is difficult, but not every difficult person is toxic. Mm. The difference is what we said at the start. They're really out to hurt you. They have an agenda to bring you down, and they might just be hurting your joy, your peace, or your self-confidence. When the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, they make us weak. When they destroy our peace, they can haunt us so we're not available for our healthy relationships and our family. We can't get them out of our mind. It seems so crazy. Uh, and, and, and so it's learning to respect who God made us to be so that we can be engaged in healthy relationships and healthy ministry. And toxic people pretty much just want to keep us from both. And, and they can be the sweetest people. Yeah. But they have that nefarious agenda. Now, I love sports. That's uh, what I used to do, and I follow it. And so, you know, you were talking right off the top here. Uh, you have to have a good offense. So yes. if it's hockey, football, you got to score points. But yeah. you also have to prevent. So how do we play defense when you've got these, kind of, these toxic people in your life? That's where we have to make the judgment. When I talk about playing offense, my favorite, one of my favorite life verses is Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God. And I love that because it reminds me when I wake up, life isn't about my comfort or my advancement or my enrichment. I should be living to seek first God's kingdom. Yeah. How does God build his kingdom using me? And, and my wife's eyes will often roll back in her head when she sees me saying it in another sermon saying, Gary, it's possible to preach a sermon without Matthew 6, 33. But it's really hard for me <laughs> because it's so much who I am. But I don't know how I was so blind to this, but just seven verses later in Matthew 7, 6. So just a few sentences later, Jesus says, after he tells the church, go on the offense, he says, but don't give what is holy to dogs or throw your pearls before swine or else they'll turn and tear you to pieces. And so Jesus, I want you to be my workers, but I don't want you to be torn up by these people who are tearing you to pieces. You cannot make that verse nice when <laughs> no. you know the first century. Yeah. Uh, when he was talking about dogs, for instance, Jews didn't keep dogs as pets. He's not talking about Fluffy or Spot or Lassie. <laughs> He's talking about these nasty vermin that would run around. And when you talk about throwing pearls before swine, pearls were so valuable. He has the parable of a man who sold all he had for a single pearl so jesus is saying you can have the most important message and with the gospel the message of jesus christ we do you could speak it in a wonderful way it's what that person most needs but if they're toxic not only will they not appreciate it they're going to try to make you pay mm. for interacting with it. they're going to make you pay for carrying that message and jesus is saying i don't want that to happen to you your time matters so go on the offense but be careful and be wise and play a little defense as well do you think that all toxic people are nefarious as you said like do you think they actually like are there not some toxic people who don't even know that they're toxic they're just caught up in this emotional maelstrom well, of emotion of yeah we need to distinguish between toxic acts and toxic people 
Hmm. All of us can be tempted toward toxic acts. One of, a marker, uh, one of the markers of a toxic person is controlling, which is so opposite who God is. E even though God is so powerful and right, it's amazing how uncontrolling he is. Joshua, choose you this day whom you will serve. God won't force you. But I've seen well-meaning people wanting to control a child or even a spouse if they see him becoming addicted or something, not because they have toxic concern where they want to hurt that person. It's out of concern for that person. Mm. So I want to keep the definitions close that a toxic person in the end wants you to do what they want you to do, not what God wants you to do, not your agenda seeking first God's kingdom. They're all about their kingdom. I'm going to run the world the way I want. And they may think, in their blindness and pride that they're trying to do what's best. But in the end, it usually comes to be what they want, what's all about them. One thing that does come very clear in your book is wasting time on people that really you're not going to be able to help anyway. Keeping on the vision. I mean, I'm, I'm like you too. I mean, this is what this ministry is about. We want people to know Jesus. We're pressing forward. It's, you know, go make disciples, you know, and do these things, you know, pray for people, you know, all the rest of it. So we're thinking in that mentality, but if you are having these toxic people in your lives, they are distracting from really what we're here to do. And that, and that is something that if we don't understand that, we're going to miss a lot of God opportunities. Yeah, you guys get it. It's such a joy to be talking to you. Uh, the main reason we walk away from toxic people is to walk toward faithful and reliable people. Uh, my life was changed in college. We had a wonderful Christian ministry where the campus pastor made sure everybody knew 2 Timothy 2-2 two, two by heart. When Paul says to a young minister, whatever you've heard me say in the presence of many others, entrust to reliable people who are qualified to teach others. Yeah. So we want to find those people who are open, who will receive what God has given us and then multiply it. It's the same thing Jesus said in the Great Commission, teaching, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So we want to obey the truth, but find others who want to know the truth and obey it as well and put our effort there. So, so for me, it's about what's the wisest investment of my time and energy. Is this person one who's not only going to be helped, but will help others? Those should become my first priority. Mm. And this is such, I think, for pastors to hear so important because it's always the troubled people who take up all your time and then the <laughs> healthy people who could actually help you, you know, do the ministry and make a difference get ignored. It, yeah. It's such a problem. But the, my biggest takeaway from this book, honestly, was you can't always get to cut toxic people out of your life. It could be in your family. It could be, you know, someone very close to you or a coworker. And so if you have to have a toxic person in your life, you give two strategies on what you can do. And that was the most valuable takeaway for me are those two things. Right. Well, I believe we walk away when we can, in part to preserve our own integrity. I'm never more tempted to become toxic than when I'm interacting with a toxic person. When I can't be with them, what I'm trying to do is, is lessen their impact. For instance, if I had a toxic uncle, I, I don't. I'm using an example here. I don't want any family <laughs> Sorry, members. Uncle, to about. <laughs> and I knew at the gathering that person's going to be toxic with everybody. I don't want to keep my kids from being around their family. But when he starts being toxic, I'm going to walk away into the next room find a nephew or niece that I can encourage or somebody I can learn from or whatnot. And so I'm just sort of walking away right there. But when you see Jesus operating with Judas, it's fascinating. Some of the things he does. One, he doesn't focus on one particular sin. Jesus didn't feel that he was there to top, stop a toxic person from that sin. We knew that Judas was a thief because John knew Judas was a thief. So Jesus knew Judas was the, but that wasn't the issue in Judas's life. He was alienated from God. And so when you're at a family gathering or an office environment and you see somebody that's sinning, it's not our job to be detective, policeman, judge, jury, and, and, and pronounce a sentence because that's usually not the issue. But what I also love about Jesus is though while he didn't chase down the smaller issues, he didn't pretend that toxic people weren't toxic. When Judas came up to Jesus to betray him with a kiss, I think what Jesus offered to Judas, what we would pay for a weekend to see Jesus alive. <laughs> Judas had three years and he's betraying him and kissing him as if this is a friend. And Jesus says, you betray the son of man with a kiss? Mm -hmm. and, and, and toxic people are masters at gaslighting. 
which is making you feel crazy for speaking the truth, Jesus didn't let Judas play that game. Look, I'm not going to become obsessed with stopping you, but I'm not going to pretend that this is a healthy situation. I'm not going to pretend that what you're doing is a good thing. You're being toxic, and I'm calling you out. Well, we could just go on and on with our own questions, but we hear there's some questions in the audience. Yes. And our Yes TV host, Christina Larice, you're going to help us. Okay, who has a question for her? Who has a question for Gary Thomas? Oh, all right. All right. As Christians, we're supposed to be kind and loving. Yes. How do we best maintain our boundaries um, when dealing with toxic people? Mm. The only thing that we can control is our actions and our attitude. I love Colossians chapter 3. Paul is writing to a brand new Christian community. There are no veteran Christians in Colossae when Paul's writing to them. So he's giving them the basics. This is what it means to be a Christian. He has two lists that I judge myself by all the time. He says those who are operating in the spirit are motivated by compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And that has to be my direction. And then he warns against those who are motivated, and this is what's toxic, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language. So when I'm looking at relationships, I'm just looking at those lists. Am I responding with kindness to this person or am I joining in in the gossip? Am I patient with this person or am I acting, expecting them to act with perfection? And then malice is against, I can't have any ill will against others. Because they're toxic doesn't excuse me from being toxic. I can't have malice toward a toxic person. I'm not supposed to lie about a liar. So we realize that we want to hold ourselves to the good things that Paul calls us to in Colossians 3. And I think, and the key is we don't want to become toxic like the toxic yes. person. That's a yes. very important thing. Okay, Christina, we have another question. Another question in the audience from Matt Romer. Yes, hey Gary. Um, sometimes it's easier to, um, to judge others and to see when somebody else is being yes. toxic. But are there signs that we can look in the mirror of whether we're being toxic? Mm. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. And, and what I just kind of mentioned, Colossians 3, is that I, I'm looking into my responding with compassion, kindness, humility, patience, and love. We mentioned controlling as being an act of a toxic person. It is so easy to want to control somebody. And, and I think when I wrote the book, what challenged me most is the way that Jesus was willing to speak the truth and to let people talk, walk away. Mm. And, and, and one of them, I think one instance, it's not a toxic person, but it's very telling, the rich young ruler. One of the gospels says that Jesus loved him. There was a connection there. Jesus got this guy, he understood him, and he made an incredible offer. He says, if you'll just sell all you have, you can come follow me. That's the only individual other than the disciples that got that very intimate invitation. But then the Bible tells us, and this is what's funny about our culture, he went away very sad because he was very rich, right? Usually we think very rich, you're very happy. <laughs> but he said, no, I'm going to go with my riches instead of Jesus. Jesus didn't chase after him. Jesus let him go. And then he turned to the reliable people, his disciples, and said, let me explain why it's so difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. So for me not to be toxic, I want to keep mission first. I'm going to have to let people go. I'm not going to hit a thousand. Everybody that I share the truth with, this will really help you. But if they're not ready to hear it, I've got to let them go if I walk in the footsteps of Jesus. That's what Jesus did. It's what we have to do. Oh, so good. Okay, we got to squeeze in one more question from Christina. You've got one Skype from New Brunswick. From New Brunswick. Let's welcome them on the screen. Hey, hey. everybody. How are you doing? Hey. You can go ahead and ask away. How do you know when to walk away from a toxic relationship? Ooh. I think one of the best markers of when to walk away from a toxic person, one, if they're haunting you. If you're not able to pray and worship in the middle, it keeps coming back. If you're losing your self-confidence, and that might seem like, well, that seems selfish, but the reality is if you don't have the confidence of God speaking through you, you won't speak up to others. You won't encourage each other. If they're destroying your joy, so you're trying to avoid them. Again, I would feel so guilty if I had heard that 10 years ago, but the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. strength. And so they're making us weak. It's the analogy of a lifeguard. It sounds counterintuitive, but one of the first things they teach lifeguards is self-defense. 
Because when you're trying to save a drowning person, they might try to drown you unintentionally. And so we have to protect ourselves to do the ministry later. Okay, we thank you, New Brunswick. And uh, you know, the great book, and here's how you can get your copy. God has given each of us a gift to let our light shine for the world to see. But at times, toxic people can hinder who God has called you to be. There are those toxic individuals that are out there that they're gonna be a waste of time and they also deplete you from reaching out to others. It's time to create the kind of life that would compel people to respond to the gospel. From best-selling author Gary Thomas comes the book, When to Walk Away, Finding Freedom from Toxic People. In the book of Luke, how many times Jesus walked away from someone or let them walk away from him without him chasing after them? This month, with your ministry gift of $25 or more, or when you become a new monthly partner, request your copy of this insightful book that shows us how to focus on our God-given purpose. Call 1-800-265-3100 or visit crossroads.ca slash freedom. Request your copy today. Gary, it has been so fantastic to have you, you here. We have loved you. you, and what an incredible audience we have here Absolutely. in Burlington, yay, and in New Brunswick. Yeah. So great to have them, and uh, you know, we're, we're gonna, I think just before we go, we have just a couple minutes left. This whole idea of labeling someone toxic or name calling someone toxic, right. just 30 seconds, can you give us the difference? Name calling is to hurt. Labeling is to understand and to respond appropriately. It's like a doctor giving a diagnosis because he wants to help you get better, mm -hmm. not a condemning accusation to make you feel worse. Two very different things. So going around saying, you're toxic. You should <laughs> no, do that. No, 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 no. Is that toxic? It, it, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about bringing healing and redemption in Jesus' name, not making people feel worse about themselves. No, 